One, two, three. That is how quick your life can change this slurry season if an accident happens. Like most tasks on the farm during the year, it requires good practice and care to ensure the safety of both the animals and the operators. There are many hazards to watch out for, especially deadly dangerous gases, drowning and machine entanglement. Tom Rain, a machinery specialist from Kildalton College, will highlight some of these dangers and more importantly, explain how to avoid them. Tom, uh, agitation of slurry is one of the critical steps in getting ready to spread the slurry onto the land. Uh, it's important to mix up the nutrients and um, probably a danger that farmers don't often realise is, is gases, Tom. And what type of gases are, are, are going to affect farmers or operators? Well, James, I suppose there are, there are a myriad of gases in slurry, you know, and uh, the, but the four main gases that we, we talk about in slurry would be carbon dioxide, methane, uh, ammonia, you know, the pungent smell of ammonia, and uh, of course the deadly gas, hydrogen sulphide. So that's the real, the real dangerous one. When you say hydrogen sulphide uh, gas, Tom, why is it so dangerous? At high concentrations, uh, say 500 parts per million or more, um, one breath can actually be fatal. What you're really saying, Tom, is the hydrogen sulphide there, and you don't know it's there. Yeah, well, that's the trouble. You, you, you can't take any chance at all. You have to take all the precautions to ensure that you're not in the area where there's going to be uh, a high concentration of these gases. What precautions should an operator be taking into account? Well, I suppose the, the, the main one is, uh, first and foremost, if you're going at the job and get the animals out of the shed, it's absolutely critical. The other thing then is that you have to keep out yourself and keep others out. The other visitors or particularly children, if there are children in the farmyard, put up the signs, you know what I mean, to make sure that, uh, that just people don't uh, enter into that area and that you have to be vigilant at all times while the job is on to do that. And I presume, Tom, with the first agitation after the winter period, that's probably the one where you're going to have the most gases. Would it be fair in saying that? Absolutely true, because the story is not disturbed and it's been building up over the, the winter period. But in a job, when you're doing the slurry, you want obviously the animals out, but you want, uh, you know, you want windy conditions, a windy day, open up all the, the doors and get wind moving in through the shed, especially at low level. Is there any time frame for when you start agitating to when the sul hydrogen sulphide levels should be decreasing or yeah, are yeah. lower parts per million? Yeah, well, I guess the, the, the recommendation is that 15 to 30 minutes, you know, even an hour, stay out of the shed, you know, when you start the agitator. Um, and especially one or two bays back from, from the, the agitation point, that's the critical area where the, 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 the most vigorous mixing is taking place. So, so I, I, I would say 30 minutes at least. But I mean, you have to keep out anyway, do you know what I mean? And keep out people from going into the shed, so take no chances at all. So the, the summary is, Tom, there, as soon as the crust is broken and the agitator is on, yeah. just clear off yeah. out that area for That's at least right. 30 minutes. That's right. Asphyxiation from gas is an invisible danger with fatal consequences in most cases. However, data from the HSA shows that three in four accidents with slurry are caused by drowning. These accidents are all fatal. 30% of child fatal accidents are caused by drowning in either slurry or in water. These accidents can be avoided with simple steps. When slats or manhole covers are lifted or removed for agitation, or when emptying a tank, ensure there is adequate temporary protection of such openings. Where possible, safety access manhole covers should be fit. Manholes should never be left open and should never be left unattended. Place safety signs close to the manhole covers where work is being carried out. In the case of slurry lagoons or open tanks, a child-proof safety wall or security fence of at least 1.8 metres in height should be erected. It cannot be understated the importance of having the machine in good working order. Often, Farmers tend to become complacent about tasks that they've done numerous times. With this complacency comes risk. And with a risk, there is potential to have an accident. It is often good practice to walk around the machine before operation. On this walk around, it is good to check hydraulic hoses, check the PTO shaft cover, and also check out the tractor itself. And often a task is to clean the mirrors. A simple glimpse in a mirror may indicate the presence of a child behind. Finally, looking at the wheel nuts to make sure that the wheel is tight 
and in good working order, and a simple walk around a machine should ensure that you're ready for work. In the field, the driver needs to be aware of overhead power lines and especially ESB network poles when operating wide slurry application equipment. A suitable match of tractor and tanker size, the slope and ground conditions will affect the handling and safety of the slurry tanker while working. Slurry is a valuable asset on any farm, rich in nutrients and organic material. If not managed appropriately, slurry operations can lead to an accident which can destroy a family and community. As we prepare to enter this busy slurry spreading season, take the time to examine your own operation. The slurry facilities on the farm should be safe for everyone that is involved.